Hello and welcome to Unit 1, Introduction to Storage Arrays. In this lesson, you will learn the basics of storage arrays. We're going to start by looking at what a storage array is, and then we will look at the key components of the storage array. And these are controller, controller enclosure, drives, and drive enclosure. Next, we will take a look at the enclosure addressing scheme. And then we will look at what a SCSI enclosure service, or CES, is. After looking at the components of the storage array, we will see how these components work together. We will then look at the benefits of storage arrays. We will also look at what a direct attached storage, or DAS, is. And then we will look at the advantage of the storage arrays over the direct attached storage. Next, we will look at the types of storage arrays. And these are Network Attached Storage, or NAS Array, Storage Area Network, or SAN Array, and Unified Array. When we cover NAS Array, we will touch upon the file-based protocols such as NFS and SMB SIFs that are used by the NAS arrays to communicate with the host computers. And then we will look at what a storage network is. When we cover the storage network, we will also touch on block-based protocol. Lastly, when we cover the SAN array, we will also look at what LUNs and volumes are. Now let's begin with the storage array. So, what is a storage array? A storage array is a storage system that provides data storage to the computers connected to it through a shared network. Storage arrays come in various sizes, from the ones that can be kept on our computer table to the ones that are extremely huge and need to be kept in data centers. Let's look at the physical components of a storage array. The typical components of a storage array are controller, controller enclosure, drives, and drive enclosure. A controller is a printed circuit board that contains a processor, memory modules, and firmware. It is often called a head or storage processor or a node. The controller acts like a specialized computer that manages all the functions of a storage array, including I.O. operations, data recovery in the event of disk failures, and management of disk capacity. A controller enclosure is an enclosure that contains one or more controllers, power supply units, fans, and other miscellaneous components. Drives can be either hard disk drives or solid state drives or a combination of both. A drive enclosure is an enclosure that contains an enclosure controller, monitoring card, multiple drives, power supply units, fans, and other supporting components. The enclosure controller is a printed circuit board with a CPU that typically manages the components of the drive enclosure, such as hard disk drives, fans, power supplies, and so on. The monitoring card is a dedicated hardware monitoring device that has sensors such as for temperature, voltage, and current to report on the status of the drive enclosure and its components, and the environmental condition, such as temperature. The drives in the drive enclosure are hot swappable. This means that we can unplug a drive when it fails and then plug in a new drive. Now we will talk about the enclosure addressing scheme and SCSI enclosure service that is implemented in the drive enclosure. The enclosure addressing scheme is used to identify the devices in the drive enclosure by assigning each and every device a unique address. Each hard disk drive is assigned an address based on its location in the drive enclosure. The enclosure addressing is important for troubleshooting and parts replacement. The SCSI Enclosure Service, or CES, is a technology that provides the means to monitor and manage the health of the drive enclosure and its components. CES can be used to detect and manage the state of power supplies, fans, drives, displays, indicators, and locks. For example, we can have a threshold limit on the power supply's voltage. And if the 12 volt output of power supply varies by plus or minus 5%, then an alert can be sent to the administrator. 
The SCSI enclosure service is either implemented on the enclosure controller or on the monitoring card that is installed in the drive enclosure. Now let's see how these components work. In the diagram, we have a controller. It has a processor, usually an Intel processor, and memory modules. The ports on the controller that connect to the storage network are called front end ports, and front end ports doesn't necessarily mean they are on the front side of the storage array. The storage array receives the incoming read-write requests from the host computers through these front-end ports. The storage controller's processor, with the intelligence provided by the firmware, processes these requests for internal action. The controller also uses high-performance memory modules called DRAM. DRAM retains the data until it is written to the hard disk, and it is also known as cache. Since DRAM memory loses the data when there is a power loss, the data in the DRAM is protected through battery-backed power in the event of an unexpected power failure. The DRAM cache accelerates the performances of the storage array through read cache and write back cache technologies. Read cache is implemented by keeping the frequently accessed data in cache so that a read request from a host computer for frequently accessed data can be served immediately without accessing the disks all the time. In write-back cache technology, whenever an incoming write from the host computer reaches the cache, an acknowledgement is sent to the host computer without waiting for the data to be written to the hard disk. Both read cache and write-back cache increases the responsiveness of the input-output operations, which otherwise would have been slower because of the mechanical nature of the hard disk drives. The back end of the controller consists of ports that connect to the dual ported hard disk drives tray through their interfaces, such as SATA, SAS, and Fiber Channel. The connections to the dual ported hard drive are in active passive mode, which means that only one port of the hard disk drive's two ports is active at a time. The major benefits of using storage arrays are high availability, increased capacity utilization, and increased performance. Storage arrays provide high availability by providing more than one of the same components, such as drives, controllers, power supplies, and fans. Storage arrays increase the capacity utilization by efficiently managing the allocation of storage resources. Let's find out what happens in the absence of a storage array. In the absence of a storage array, each server has to depend on its own storage, which is usually one or more hard disk drives directly attached to it. And such storage cannot be shared with other servers. This direct attachment of the storage to a single server, either internally or externally, is called Direct Attached Storage, or DAS. The disadvantage of direct attached storage is that while one server may have plenty of free storage capacity available, another server may be running out of space and there is no option to share the free capacity available in one of the servers. A storage array addresses this problem by having storage as a single pool that can be shared among the servers. An example would help us explain this concept better. Let's say we have two servers, X and Y. Server X has 500 gigabytes as its storage capacity, and server Y has 500 gigabytes as its storage capacity. Let's say server X has utilized only 100 gigabytes of space out of its 500, so it has plenty of free space, that is, 400 gigabytes. On the other hand, let's say server Y has utilized 490 gigabytes of space out of its 500. Obviously, it is running out of space. It would help if we could borrow some free space from server X and give it to server Y, but this cannot be done because the storage is attached to each server and therefore cannot be shared. As a result of direct attached storage, the overall capacity utilization is less. The solution is to ensure that storage is no longer attached to individual servers, but rather belongs to a storage array, which has a single pool of storage. 
So, in our example, let's say we have moved the storage capacity to the storage array. The storage array now has a total capacity of 1000 gigabytes, and the two servers, X and Y, can access their storage from the storage array. The storage array can now determine the storage allocation of each server connected to it. It can reclaim the surplus space from server X and replenish server Y with some additional space. Overall, the storage has increased the capacity utilization by efficiently managing the allocation of storage capacity. Storage arrays increase the performance because some of the host computer's workload can now be handled by the storage array controller. Now let's discuss the types of storage arrays. There are three types of storage arrays. Network Attached Storage, or NAS Array. Storage Area Network, or SAN Array. Unified NAS and SAN Array. Let's begin with the Network Attached Storage. NAS is a storage array that connects to host computers through an IP network and communicates with them using file-based protocols such as NFS, and SMB SIFs. Let's understand a little bit more about NFS and SMB SIFs. NFS stands for Network File System. It was designed to support the Unix file system in which host machines can mount a disk partition on the storage array as if it were a local disk. NFS allows file sharing over a network. SMB stands for Server Message Block. It is Microsoft's protocol for the Windows file system that allows file sharing over a network using a client-server model. SIFS stands for Common Internet File System. It is a public version of SMB. In short, NFS is for the Unix or Linux-based operating system, whereas SMB SIFS is for the Windows operating system. Most NAS storage arrays support both NFS and SMB SIFs. But for the sake of argument, let's say the NAS storage arrays support only SMB SIFs. Then the Unix or Linux-based host computers can access NAS storage arrays using the Samba client. Samba is an SMB SIFs file server that runs in a Unix or Linux-based operating system. Alternatively, if the NAS storage arrays support only NFS, then the Windows operating system can access NAS storage arrays using the NFS client. Before we define the SAN storage array, let's explain what a storage network is. A storage network is a network that was developed for transporting block-based protocols. The block-based protocol is a protocol that transports an entire block of data. On the other hand, the file-based protocol transports only one byte of data at a time, and it relies on the lower level block protocol to reorder the bytes into blocks. A SAN storage array is a storage array that connects to the host computers through a storage area network and communicates with them using block-based protocols such as Fiber Channel, iSCSI, and FCOE. When talking about a SAN storage array, it is important to mention how the storage is presented to the host computers. The storage capacity of a SAN storage array has to be shared among the host computers, so it is divided into logical disks that are assigned to the hosts. These logical disks appear to the hosts as local disks. The logical disks, or logical units as they are usually called, are identified by a unique number called a logical unit number, or LUN. LUNs play a vital role in the management of storage in the SAN storage array. They provide a logical abstraction between the host computers and the hard disk drives of the storage array. The terms LUNs and volumes should not be confused with each other. While a LUN is a unique number that is assigned to a logical unit, volume, on the other hand, is a broad term that denotes a contiguous area on a storage device and includes LUNs and partitions. Now let's look at the Unified Storage Array. A Unified Storage Array is a storage array that supports both file-based protocols and block-based protocols. Host computers can access the Unified Storage Arrays 
either using file-based protocols or using block-based protocols. They are also called multi-protocol storage arrays. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. Let's summarize what you've learned in this lesson. In this lesson, you learned what a storage array is, and then we looked at the key components of the storage array. And these are controller, controller enclosure, drives, and drive enclosure. Next, we looked at the enclosure addressing scheme, and then we looked at what a SCSI enclosure service, or CES, is. After looking at the components of the storage array, we saw how these components work together. We then saw the benefits of storage arrays. We also looked at what a direct attached storage, or DAS, is, and then we looked at the advantages of the storage array over the direct attached storage. Next, we looked at the types of storage arrays, and these were network attached storage, or NAS array, storage area network, or SAN array, and unified array. When we covered the NAS array, we also touched upon the file-based protocols such as NFS and SMB SIFs that are used by the NAS arrays to communicate with the host computers. And then we looked at what a storage network was. When we talked about the storage network, we touched on block-based protocol. Lastly, when we covered the SAN array, we also looked at what LUNs and volumes were. In the next lesson, you will learn about architectures of the storage array. Thank you for watching.